So my intention when I gave an adjustment to a patient, that was me on the table. When I adjusted somebody else, I said, how would I like to be treated? And I think a lot of the chiropractors today don't have that service consciousness. They're looking for what's in it for me rather than how can I help. If you want to be successful in life, serve people. Hello and welcome to The Smart Chiropractor. I am Dr. Jeff Langmetti with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch. And today we have a fantastic opportunity. I'm going to encourage everybody listening and watching. This is an episode you are going to want to save. We are fortunate to be joined by a very long-term friend of Jason, a new friend and acquaintance of mine, Ken Harris, who is an esteemed healer, chiropractor, educator. We're going to try to dive into as much of that as possible. But as we get started, Ken, thanks for taking some time out of your day to share with us and our audience. I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. Well, if it ain't fun, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm too old to not have fun. So thank you for having me. And I hope some words of wisdom will flow between us and it will bless someone listening to this today and put them on a whole new trajectory in their careers. I absolutely love that. So one of the things that when I see your name, I think about mind, body, spirit, and how all-encompassing healing is. And I think us as chiropractors, being a hands-on caring profession, we live that each and every day. But I'm curious on how you got started being interested in the mind-body connection, being interested in chiropractic. Where did it begin for you? Well, I was blessed to meet a beautiful woman of uh, 54 years. We're married, Judy and I, uh, in college. And uh, I asked her, what does your father do? And she said, well, my father's a chiropractor. And I shut my mouth at that moment because right before I met Judy, I had met another girl in high school whose father was a chiropractor. And I was merciless. I ridiculed them. I said, they're quacks. They don't know what they're doing. It's charlatanism. But when I kissed Judy the first time, I said, shut your mouth. You're going to lose this one, too. The universe sent two of them in my world. So uh, we were traveling across country to California one year. Judy uh, blew a disc. I carried her into an office. And she walked out. And I was like, what? You walked out? I, th I thought I have to take you to the hospital. Bottom line was, the doctor said, bring him back the next day for a checkup. And while I was sitting there, I had an epiphany. The next day, there was a brochure, Careers in Chiropractic. I read it, and I had an opening. I had a, I said, this makes total sense. So I, I took a three-year leave of absence from my teaching job in New York City, and I went back to the Columbia Institute of Chiropractic at the time. And the first person I met was Dr. Irene Gold. And I, I laughed because I sat down next to her. It wasn't coincidence. And she says, uh, you want to learn about chiropractic? I said, yeah, that's why I'm in school. <laughs> She says, you're not going to learn it here. Come up once a month to my house and you'll learn it really about chiropractic. So for me, I went to Reggie's house and I, I innately knew when I heard the story, what we call the chiropractic story, it made total resident sense to me, viscerally. And the rest is history. I, I, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. Hey doc, the money is in your list. If you're not utilizing weekly email newsletters to drive reactivations into your practice, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. To schedule a demo and see how we help hundreds of docs do this each and every week, go to thesmartchiropractor.com today. Again, that is thesmartchiropractor.com. Schedule a demo with our team. But right now, we'll get back into this awesome interview on interviews by The Smart Chiropractor. Yeah, and I want to just sort of piggyback on that story a little bit. We've got a wide audience of those that have been around for decades and those who are just being introduced to what we'd call the chiropractic story. Uh, let me ask you, from what you heard years ago that got you, you know, hook, line, and sinker, uh, how do you describe what the chiropractic story is and, and what about it you think got, got you so quickly and so powerfully? Well, I, me I remember Reggie used the term universal intelligence and innate intelligence. I had never heard those terms used in that way. You know, most people would say universal intelligence, God, and innate, innate, innate. What is this innate thing? And of course, innate is the divine spark that lives in all creation. And the relationship in chiropractic is we help to connect the universal to the innate. That, that's our job. We remove the interference between universal and innate. And that made sense to me. And of course, the nervous system is the distribution center for that information to be uh, promulgated throughout the whole body. So I just, I, I had never heard anybody talk like that before. I mean, you know, God was someplace up there or the spirit was over there. No, it lives in each and every one of us. And that makes more, that made more sense to me. And yeah. the chiropractic had a means by which it could connect those two elements. So that was exciting. I, I'll never forget, I had a, an epiphany in that moment. I said, wow, this is bigger than necks and backs. It had nothing to do with necks and backs. 
that would have been boring. I, would, I don't think I would have wanted to stay in school if all I was going to do was to fix a neck or a back. But to change people's lives, to reconnect them to their soul self, that's exciting. And that's why I had a cradle to grave, vault to joint practice for 45 years. Doing that, I loved it. I still love it, but but I, it's time for me to do some other things. So at my age of 77, I'm, I have a, I rewired myself, reinvented myself. I didn't retire. Anyone says you retire, I say, no way. No, I'm just rewired. When we first hopped on before we started recording, you showed up with a smile, energized and ready to go. I think that is a great testament to a fantastic career and the optimism of where you're at today and what you still hope to accomplish. I absolutely love it. Question for you regarding this. Is the question is a personal question from, from me, and I'm curious on your thoughts on this. When we look at universal intelligence, when we look at innate intelligence, is there a way to separate this from a religious connotation or are they intimately intertwined? How, do, how would you define that? How do you look at that? How do you consider that? And I just would love to know your, your thoughts on how then that relates to the care that you delivered and how it, it could relate to many chiropractors out there. Well, I never confused religion with chiropractic personally. For me, they were separate and distinct. Religion has a whole bunch of rules and regulations and dogma. You can practice any religion you want and be a great chiropractor. <laughs> it's not necessary you give up your religion to practice chiropractic. Well, you can be an atheist and be a great chiropractor. No, chiropractic is based on universal principles, just like gravity. I remember Dr. Sid used to say, I'll drop the keys a thousand times, they're going to fall. It's a universe. Whether you believe in it or not, it's going to happen. So chiropractic is based on philosophical principles, which the whole universe is designed that way. All it, the universe is a unified field. You know, our five senses tell us you're there and I'm here. But at the deepest level of the quantum mind, we're all connected. It's really one, one field of which we all are. Well, we're subframes in the mainframe. Let me put it that way. Each one of us ha has access to the mainframe, which is the, the quantum, the, the universal line. A chiropractic, the adjustment actually helps to connect people to that field. That's really the intention of an adjustment, not to, not to move the ball in an earth. I, I got beyond that real quick. I realized there was something more going on. Palmer called it the subtle force, the impulse. The nerve impulse is a subtle force, but it is a force. And the intelligence, force, and matter are connected. So that's exciting. You know, making people's pain go away. I, 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 I didn't get excited about that. But when I saw them wake up and their lives changed, I saw people's lives change from, from uh, maintenance, preventative, ongoing chiropractic. I, I, I encourage people to do that. I mean, of course, you know, I had three systems, relief care, corrective care, lifetime maintenance care. But I'll let them choose. I said, well, you know, I'm here to serve you. What do you want? And I'd explain the, the parameters of each and what's required and so on. But I had a family practice. I mean, I wanted to get my hands on kids. I mean, I had hundreds of kids in my office, you know, for 45 years. And, and, and that that's exciting. By the way, uh, you, you know Dr. Jake Comerick, who does the horse, horse car practice? He says, horses and kids get well quick. You know why, Ken? They got a story going on in their head why they're supposed to be sick. And it's true. It's true. Children respond beautifully. The, the biggest accolade I ever had in my practice is when a mother brought her newborn baby from the hospital to my office before they even went home to get checked. And people used to say in, when they saw a baby come in, is there anything more with the baby? I said, no, no, we're here to make sure that during the birth process it didn't get misaligned because it could be 10, 20, or 30 years before we know there's anything wrong. And when a mother gives that baby up to you, you know there's honor and respect and trust. And that to me, you know, how much is that worth? And you've been around the profession for decades. You've uh, worked with, let alone spoken to and with thousands of chiropractors over the many decades. What do you think are some of the, I guess, missing messages that both the profession isn't really paying attention to, understanding or embracing or communicating? Uh, and therefore, what do you think people are mostly missing out on? I know you're out and about. You're always a chiropractor wherever you are, whatever you're doing. What, what do you think are some of the things that people hear and lights them up the way it lit you up that they may not be hearing from much of the profession currently that they you think that they should be hearing? Well, there's a disconnect. The pub, in the public consciousness, chiropractic, you're in a car accident, you go to a chiropractor. You got a neck ache, you go to a chiropractor. You got a back ache. They have no conscious awareness of the relationship of the nervous system to full body function. So in my practice, once a week, for 25 years, I never missed a new patient orientation. 
And if you're not doing that, I think you're missing the boat. I think our profession needs to be a, primarily an educator first and then a healer second. But people need to understand that the body does the healing. Our job is just to remove the physical interference. And, and that was my success. I, 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 I used to insist that I used to invite, but I would encourage people to bring their spouse and, and a, a loved one with them for the report of findings so they could be educated. Education is what, there's like a disconnect because, you know, dentist teeth, podiatrist feet, chiropractic back. We got nothing to do with back aches. We're, neuro, we're, we're concerned with the neurological integrity of the, of the spine and nervous system. And that's big. That's a big idea. Yeah. So I think the problem in our profession is we haven't been educating the public as to what we do. They have a misperception, misconception, a chiropractor. Well, or when you have a car accident. They're like, go only go to the dentist when you got a toothache and they got to pull it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, might, that might be me going to the dentist, but that's not recommended. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the way to go about it. Uh, you, you, you are absolutely, you got two, uh, two guys on here chatting with you that could not agree more. We think about exactly what you described in the philosophy that we like to say is teach and invite consistently that many of, of the greatest educators, teachers, chiropractors teach and invite consistently. It sounds like you have embodied that throughout your, your entire career. You mentioned earlier, you know, popping into class, sitting next to Irene Gold. What a, you know, what a story. I'd love to know who are some of the chiropractors uh, of today, uh, of the future or of the past that you have held a special place for? And the reason I ask this is because we speak with a lot of younger docs and many of them don't know what I would consider, I'll speak for Jason as well, to the chiropractic greats. So in your personal experience, you've come across many chiropractors throughout your career. Who are some of those people, either well-known or less well-known, that you believe people listening and watching to this podcast and show should be aware of and explore on their own? I'd love to know some of your greats. I was blessed. I had great mentors in my in my journey into into chiropractic. Reggie was the first one. You know, I was a virgin when I heard the story. He opened me up big time. And after Reggie, um, you know, I, I I had the privilege of being with Dr. Pasquale Sarasoli, who was an old timer who had incredible practice in Brooklyn, New York. I mean, he had he had a waiting room that held fifty people, twenty five women, twenty five men. And, and he was a legend in his own right. And of course, I, you know, Dr. Sid Williams from Life University was also uh, one of my mentors along the way. But the number one mentor for me, the one who really flipped me, was a guy named Dr. William Bain. Now, Bill Bain and his four brothers had the largest chiropractic, they didn't call it a practice, service in the entire world. Back in Jerry, New Hampshire, there were five of them. They had a traffic cop in their driveway. Uh, that, that's how busy they were. People would come by the bus loads, and they were primarily upper cervical. They had to make one decision. Is it going to be a right atlas or a left atlas? And I saw it in an operation. I went up to that clinic. I couldn't believe what I was saying. And, uh, of course, many of the people here who are listening may know Dr. Ernie Landy. Some, so I know you guys know Ernie. And uh, when I made a movie of Bill's life, er, Ernie, uh, Ernie said, you know, Ken, he said one day in the movie of Bill's life, he said, I had two Greyhound buses pull up. I had 80 new patients all at once. And Ernie says, that's true, Kenny, because I actually every single one of them. Ernie was there that day, synchronistically. So Bill Bill really changed the course and the destiny of the rest of my life because he had the big vision. You know, we were going to, you know, B.J. Palmer had the vision. I, I wasn't blessed to meet B.J., but I read the books and D.D. Palmer. And, you know, the, the real intent of chiropractic was to unify the spiritual and physical man. And we were going to empty the jails and empty the hospitals and and you you and kind on earth would restore its awareness that we're all one. What I do to you, I do to me. So my intention when I gave an adjustment to a patient, that was me on the table. When I adjusted somebody else, I said, how would I like to be treated? And I think a lot of the chiropractors today don't have that service consciousness. They're looking for what's in it for me rather than how can I help. If you want to be successful in life, serve people. Ask the question, how can I be? The first question I asked you guys, what can I do to address your audience? You notice that? How can I help you? What, what are they looking for? And I hope they're looking for enthusiasm and some spizzerinkdom and reignite the passion. Chiropractic is, is a gift. I don't know, and many people listen and don't even know that the Palmer family 
they were channeled from the spirit world. They were told to bring the chiropractic adjustment to the physical level because D.D. Paula was a magnetic healer at the time. He wasn't touching people. He was doing woo stuff like I do now. But in any case, he was told, bring it down to the physical level and remove, remove the physical interference. And so we, this was a gift. We're, we're part of, by the way, we're part of the crew on planet Earth. We're not passengers, guys. Chiropractors are here to make a shift in humanity. That's, that's my vision. And that's, I still feel that. I still feel that. I'm not adjusting anymore, but I'm here to wake people up. That, that's my new mission. From the illusion of separation to the reality of oneness. It's all of us and none of us. The ship goes down, planet Earth goes down, we're all gone. I don't care how much money you have and you think you're on the top floor, everything's going to, you know, if the environment collapses in the next 10 or 15 years, I don't, there's no safe place. So it behooves all of us, all hands on deck, show up, all crew members, if you're listening, take battle stations. <laughs> hey, it's Dr. Jason. I just want to take a brief moment and invite you to schedule a demo with our team to learn more about our patient pilot automated email campaigns. They are the smartest way to reactivate the people you've seen over the years in the past. Check it out, schedule a demo. We look forward to helping you help more people by piloting your patients back into your practice. Now back to our show. Ken, how, how would you uh, explain to, again, we're going to re reference, uh, there's those that know what you're talking about and those that don't. I'll assume the younger generation of sorts that may not just have been exposed to these messages. Uh, that's part of our goal for being here today. When you say chiropractic changes people's lives, the adjustment changes people's lives, can you articulate in more detail for a lot of chiropractors that may mean, well, listen, you know, if you get rid of my neck pain or back pain, my life is much better. There's no question that's a, that's a good thing. People can benefit from it. But what do you really mean? Is it a physical change that happens that they can now do things they weren't physically able to do? Is it a shift in consciousness about the way they think about health and philosophy? Is it a deeper gratitude and appreciation for the miracle of this thing we call life? Is it, how do you describe you know, this being a life-changing experience or idea? All of the above. They initially come on a need for pain relief. 99% of the people knock on your door because they've been everywhere else. No one's been able to help them. And so they're in pain. If you can produce relief of the pain, you got their attention now. And if they can stick around long enough over time, uh, I believe that they, they'll, they'll make an, any connection to their own soul sense self. Where lies all the guidance? We don't need to tell other people what to do. People will be directed inwardly. Everybody in the world is outwardly directed. No, no, chiropractic helps them to get in touch viscerally with, with their soul. And, and so emotionally they change, spiritually they change. I've seen miracles. People stop drinking. They're alcoholics. They adjust them. After a while, they say, you know, I think I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop abusing myself. You know, and, and it, it gets them back in tune. And what do we say chiropractic was founded on tone? They can hear a different station. You know, you know, I always used to say, you don't have to do a lot to the patient. If you listen to a radio and it's static, you only got to do is a little bit of click and the tune comes in. And it's the same thing with an adjustment. You don't have to do a lot, but sometimes you right time, right place, right direction. They'll, like, they'll get reconnected to their soul sense. So there'll be a, a, a light will go on it. A, a light bulb will, <laughs> will illuminate them. So I've seen miraculous changes in people's marriages healed. Uh, alcoholism stopped. All, all manner of illness uh, disappeared from anything from diabetes to, to multiple sclerosis. I mean, I, I saw miracles in my office, not because of me, but because the body has that innate potential if you remove the interference to re recalibrate itself. And of course, in the mind body, I always had other people helping me. I had people doing nutrition. I had people doing yoga. I had people doing meditation, but I was the only chiropractor. My job was very specific. I was the first line of, of connection. And then they needed other things, obviously. Uh, I couldn't be all things to all people. So I didn't mix. I didn't mix what I did with anything else. I'm not, I wasn't opposed. I said, listen, you know, if you eat junk, I could adjust you, but you better change your diet <laughs> at some point. And they would automatically, some of them would, they would say, I'm not going to put that poison in you. So the changes were myriad, and they, they encompass physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And they struggle with the kids today. They don't have enough experience. They they don't know the, the you know, the old timers like myself. We got miracles in our office. 
There weren't double blind studies, but I, I saw them every day. I mean, that's what they, I had. I, had, I don't know if you got a lady come in. She brings me flowers and a, and a personal thing she made. I said, oh, are you going to visit someone? She said, no, this is for you, Doc. Again. I said, oh, really? Why? I said, because when I came here, I had a shoulder problem. And you showed me how my spine, you know, different things, the nerves go to my shoulder. But I never told you I had this lung disease that had been monitored for the last six years. I just came from my doctor and he took an x-ray and it's all gone. And he says, have you done anything different? She said, yeah, one thing in the last six months, I've been going to this guy help me <laughs> for my shoulder. And the tumor's gone. I say, I'm glad you didn't tell me. I, I would have had a limited belief that they couldn't go away. <laughs> but I, could tell, I was very clear. I said, listen, I know you think I did it. I didn't do it. I was instrumental in connecting you to your soul self, and your soul decided you didn't need the tumors anymore. And I've had other things. I've had all kinds of crazy things, skin conditions. Uh, you know, skin ones are good because you can see them, and then they're gone. Right. You know, I can't say it's, it's in their head. It's placebo. The, the psoriasis is gone. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we, are, we have a, a, a beautiful, we're in a PowerPoint position as chiropractors to bring miracles in, into people's lives, way, way beyond just relieving their aches and pains. But we got to teach them. We got to explain to them you know, and let them know that you're the healer. I'm, I, I'm gonna, you know, I used to say, I don't want to take the credit nor the blame. I'll do my job, but it's up to your body now to heal itself. And, and the body is vitalistic. It was designed that way. It's no big deal for the body to heal itself. You get the interference out of it, but you got to remove the interference. You know, something you mentioned, Ken, that I'd, I'd love to wrap with is around no coincidences. And it makes me think of Synchronicity, your, your book, The Magic, The Mystery, The Meaning. The ratings are out of this world on Amazon. Well done for writing a book. It's ridiculously hard to do so. To write a good book is even harder. To write a book that has the impact, the reviews, the testimonials as people are are, are providing is, is just wonderful. So uh, we're going to drop a link to that down in the show notes for sure. I'm going to encourage everybody listening and watching, head on over, grab a copy, dive in. But before we wrap, Ken, I'd love to spend just a moment and have you just describe that in, in a little bit of detail. When you talk about no coincidences, when we reference synchronicity as, as you have with the title of your book, great title, by the way, um, what, is that, what does that mean to you in, in a nutshell? What's the big idea behind those messages? I would say pay attention. The universe is designed through synchronicity. It's, ha it's ubiquitous. It's happening to everyone all the time, but they're not consciously aware of it. They don't know how to connect the dots. But everything you need will be brought to you. Just pay attention. The signs and symbols are right on your path. The next person you meet, so-called stranger, listen to what they ask you. Listen to what they tell you. Ask them questions. Sometimes you'll be at a precipice point. I don't know if you go left or right. They'll meet someone. They'll give you the answer if you listen. So I, I, I get giddy sometimes because you can't make this stuff up. It's not mathematics. It's not random. People tell me, oh, it's just probability and statistics, Dr. Ken. You know, I laugh. I go, yeah. Zero to none. That's the probability of some of the things that have happened to me and, and to people. Everyone, you know, they shake their head. Well, yeah, I think that's something like that happened to me. And that's what the book does, by the way. It just reminds people of the seven different types of synchronicity, you know, and, and they become more aware of them happening. I get letters all the time since I read your book. Man, they're happening to me all the time. I said, hey, they were always happening to you. Now you're just aware of it. So we give them a blueprint, the seven types, the six reasons we meet people, the five questions you ask for interpretation. And there are four practices you can do to actually create synchronicities in your life and have fun. It's fun. I, I don't have a day that I don't meet someone where I'm not, I'm not laughing. I mean, it's just, you know, I smile a lot now and I just listen, you know, to what they have to tell me. And I, I, there are no strangers. The world is my waiting room at this point. I, I'm no longer intended to an office. But my, the whole world's my office. And I'm a friendly guy, by the way. If you want to have more synchronicities, just ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions of people. You know, they ask me usually, where are you from, Doc? And depending on the level of consciousness, I saw the same place you're from. They look at me like, really? <laughs> I said, well, I come from the same place. Life on this planet came from the same place, wherever that is. And then they'll say to me, uh, what are you doing here? And I'd say, well, just visiting. Aren't we all? I mean, that's the truth of the matter. Of course, if they're not conscious, I say I'm from New Jersey and I'm down on vacation. But you can tell, you can look in a person's eyes. I, I know in the nanosecond, are they awake? Are they sleepwalking? What can I say? To, and we always smile. When they start to smile back, they shake their head. You're right. We're just visiting, folks. Let's make the best of it. Let's be kind to each other. 
You know, I mean, what's going on in the world today is insanity. And we've got acclimated to the insane world that we're living in. It's not supposed to be that way. That I believe we can change it. Well, I think that's a fantastic message. I love the idea of expanding uh, our our universal ability to understand each other, to ask deep questions, to ask even superficial questions just to get started, Ken. I love the message that you brought to all of our listeners today. Again, I'm going to encourage everybody listening and watching, click on the links down below, pick up a copy of Ken's book, head on over there. You'll see uh, what uh, the impact it's making on others' lives and the impact that it can make on, on your life. Ken, thank you so much. Thank you for being a chiropractor. Thank you for impacting countless lives in your practice, continuing to impact lives beyond the practice as we sit here today. Uh, I appreciate, I know Jason does as well greatly, the time that you took out of your day to share with our tribe. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing with us. And we'll look forward to maybe doing maybe doing a follow up and diving deeper into the book at a, at a separate time. So thank you, Ken, for chatting with us today. Well, it's been my joy and pleasure, and uh, I'm just so delightful that you you guys are out there trying to make a difference and wake the chiropractic profession up because uh, we have a big responsibility. It's no light thing, you know. And by the way, it's not a nine to five job. Chiropractic, chiropractic is a way of life. It has been for me. I, I didn't wear two hats, you know. I had a whole office. I, my office was open and available 24 seven if people needed me. And they didn't abuse it, but I was there. I went to funeral homes, I went to hospitals, I went to house calls. I mean, it, you know, I didn't say, well, call one day uh, when I'm back in the office and we'll see if we can fit you in. Well, no, no, I was available to people. And people knew that. The number one thing people want to know about you, do you care? They, more than how skillful you are. They want, does this guy really care? Is he doing this for the right reason? And they'll read you innately. If you got dollar signs in your eyes, they're going to find another chiropractor. But if they know you really genuinely want to help them, the, the NAT in the communication is so let, let the people go out and build a practice for you. They will. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Smart Chiropractor. To not miss a single thing that's clinically oriented, marketing oriented, or more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel today.